This is Real News Media TV, coverage you can trust. Please like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates. Good afternoon, my Real News Media TV family. Welcome back to the channel for another news update for April 20, 2023. And in the news this afternoon, Zozos extended in various communities across the island. The government is seeking a further 60-day extension of the zones of special operations in seven communities across the island. The security measure in the locations were scheduled to expire on April 24. Zozos have been set up in Mount Salem and Norwood St. James, Denham Town, Greenwich Town, August Town, and the Parade Gardens in Kingston and St. Andrew, and Savannah Lamar, Westmoreland. National Security Minister Dr. Harris Chang says the security measure has been yielding positive results. He told the House of Representatives yesterday afternoon that all the areas are seeing a reduction in major crimes as at April 13. Mount Salem had a 60% in murders and 63% in shootings over the period indicated. Then I'm told it's 13% and 40%. Greenwich Town is a 35% reduction in murder, while a 70% reduction in shootings. August Town, 64% and 78%. Norwood, 56% and 100% reduction in shooting. There are a couple of murders based on other activities. Parade Gardens, violence, of course, which is still the propensity of a number of people, so stabbing and battering with stones, etc., seem to be appearing in a number of years. But in those cases, largely interpersonal. Parade Gardens had a 93% reduction in murder and 91% in shootings. And Sablomar has a similar 93% in reduction in murder and 75% in shooting. Labor Minister says a majority of security guards signed the new contracts despite the concerns. In a much-anticipated statement during yesterday's sitting of the House of Representatives, Minister of Labor and Social Security Carl Samuda says a majority of security guards have signed the new contracts offered by security companies despite the concerns. Security companies have been requiring the guards to sign new contracts that would see them losing much of the benefits they would have accumulated during their years of service. The guards transitioned from independent contractors to employees on April 1. Mr. Samuda says his ministry has been visited by security guards who have expressed the reservations about the new contracts. Meanwhile, turning to assertions by the various unions, the rights of the guards are being violated under the new contracts, Mr. Samuda said he did not have any evidence of such violations. Mr. Samuda says that guards who believe they have been treated unfairly should report the matter to the Labor Ministry for it to be investigated. So far, he says his office has received less than 90 such complaints. Mr. Samuda notes that from his own review of the contracts, the challenge exists in the explanation of what the new work conditions will be under the transition from contract workers to employees. The Labor Minister has announced that a committee will be set up to resolve disputes within the industrial security sector. Madam Speaker, there are approximately 25,000 security guards employed in the country at this time. The fact is that in spite of the concerns, 85% have already signed their new contracts. Opposition Member of Parliament Dr. Angela Brownberg has chided the Labour Minister over his assessment of the employment contracts offered to the guards. Dr. Brownberg says the contracts being offered are not the same across all security companies but infringe on the rights of the guards in similar ways. Dr. Brownberg argues that the minister's approach to treat each complaint brought by individual guards on a case-by-case -case basis is impractical. She says that Minister Samuda should instead consider the issues on a broad scale and the seek resolutions accordingly. JPS issues warning to third parties using its polls. The Jamaica Public Service Company has warned licensed third-party contractors who use its 300,000 pole island-wide distribution network to deliver cable and telecommunications signals that as it ramps up safety and accountability standards, it will be taking a zero-tolerance approach to breaches of its network usage. This warning came during the inaugural National Utility Poll Line Safety Conference, which was held at the Jamaica Conference Center on Tuesday under the theme a Climbing Towards a Collaboration and a Safety. Erin Tonkis, manager of Grid Interconnection at the GPS, admitted that while the company has service contracts with some providers 
Some entities were guilty of freeloading. He vowed to put a stop to this illegal practice, which has been causing defects in the operational integrity of the network and posing significant risk to public safety. The Electricity Act of 2015 stipulates that the JPS must enter into a written contract with any company wishing to use its island-wide distribution network to deliver services. We have to address this problem together. It can't be JPS working over here and the operators are working over there, case insisted. He cited a case in which the JPS determined that one of its utility poles near to a school needs to be taken out of service. It placed the replacement pole beside it and transferred the wires which carry electricity. However, it could not take down the older pole as it could not contact the other companies. We were busy trying to get all the other persons who had attachments on that pole to come and remove them. We couldn't get to them, and there was a failure, and the pole fell on the fence at the school he disclosed, adding that, while no one was injured, the outcome could have been very different. Similar situations have resulted in a number of twin pole instances, as the defective poles remained standing beside their replacements because the JPS could not reach all parties to coordinate the transfer of assets from the defective poles. We are getting to the stage where it's going to be zero tolerance on the network in terms of what we require. We have to be able to identify the users. It has always been in the contract and we will be enforcing it now where we will be requiring every person who uses the pole to have a label on their attachment at every pole, he said. If we go out there and there is not a label on an attachment on a pole, we are going to take down that attachment. He further noted that liabilities would now be on the companies and those in breach could face lawsuits. It cannot just be business as usual, said the grid interconnection manager. Meanwhile, JPS Chief Operating Officer Gary Borrow said the company was using the conference to press the reset button to intensify the focus and appreciation for safety as it pertains to the utility business. In the workplace, it is that one critical moment where that mistake can cost you your life. By promoting safety measures, we can create a safer environment for ourselves and those around us, he said. Safety measures are not just a matter of following rules and regulations, but also about adopting a safety culture as a way of life. Despite our policy for applying rules and procedures to promote the accident-free performance of duties, we have had accidents recently that should really not have happened, fatalities and injuries that could have been avoided. Just imagine the impact to families and loved ones when serious accidents occur, he added. It was against this backdrop that this conference was conceptualized to bring awareness to the importance of safety and to ensure that every person goes home to their family unharmed from a hard day's work. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates.